Yeah, that part of Florida, the Big Bend, Northwest Florida, has just been getting hammered the past five, six years. It seems like every year they're dealing with a big storm. And unfortunately, they're about to deal with another one. Currently, Helene is undergoing rapid intensification, is moving into a very favorable environment, so much so that it's been upgraded in the past hour and a half to a hurricane. Very large storm, so not just intense, but the spatial area of it is large. So even though the Big Bend will take the direct hit, I think, as far away as Orlando, Jacksonville, even up towards Atlanta, they could see tropical storm force gusts. As of the 11 a.m. advisory, 80 mile per hour winds, a category, a category one storm, and this has a long ways to go. It's making landfall likely tomorrow evening, anywhere from just to the east of Pensacola, Tallahassee is right in the middle of that, to the uh, east to the western edge of the Big Bend region, but there'll be a 10 to 14, 15 foot storm surge that piles up along the Big Bend. So big problems there, and then it moves inland and really rains itself out. So inland, even though the wind's no longer a big story, there could be upwards of a foot of rain over parts of Georgia, Alabama, even going up to Tennessee. So this is the wind uh, radii of the storm. There's going to be hurricane force winds right around the center, but tropical storm force gusts extend all the way out to Cape Canaveral. It's why they canceled the, spa the uh, space launch tomorrow. Uh, tropical storm force gusts Jacksonville all the way up towards Atlanta. So a powerful storm. And actually, it's getting sucked northeastward because of the system we're getting today. Unrelated the rain today to Helene, but it is playing into uh, the path of that hurricane. Now, in terms of us, we're seeing just spotty showers currently. They'll become more widespread later on. There are more widespread showers way off towards the south and west, so it will take some time. Otherwise, we're still dealing with the gloom. That temperature is stuck in the 50s, 58 degrees. Schenectady, Fryhofer, Sky came up to 60 in Albany, 63 Cooperstown, not usually the warmest number this time of year, but 64 is the warmest number down in Poughkeepsie, where maybe there's a few more breaks in the clouds. Showers will continue to be light over the next several hours, and then I think they'll pick up in intensity later on this evening, or at least in coverage later on this evening, and continue throughout the morning tomorrow. So tomorrow's morning commute could be pretty wet with some steady pockets of rain, and even a few rumbles of thunder are possible. This continues, I think, into the early afternoon, and then turns a lot more spotty. By tomorrow evening, we should all be drying on out. So it's the next two days where you'll have to be dodging showers, especially tonight, throughout the day tomorrow, and then we enter a dry stretch once again and set up for a really nice weekend with, again, dry conditions and comfortable temperatures. It's a pattern that we've been all too familiar with this month. 63 to 68 this afternoon. Showers continue at times. We're breezy, so at times, especially this afternoon, it could be a windswept rain. Tonight, 55 to 60, rain and a few rumbles. Tonight is when the rain becomes more widespread. Some fog is also possible, so that could add to potentially a treacherous commute tomorrow morning. Tomorrow itself, it's upper 60s to low 70s. Showers, some of which can be steady. A few rumbles, and by tomorrow night, we are partly clear, all drier. Still some late night fog as possible. We're set up for a fantastic end to the week. It's mid 70s on Friday. Few more clouds actually from the outer edge of Helene on Saturday. But with high pressure in place, we're not getting any showers from Helene. 74 Sunday, I think, with more sun compared to Saturday. Dry on Monday, and then maybe just a stray shower chance on Tuesday. But we squeeze out, JT, a really nice weekend for another consecutive weekend.